anchor in the waters of a port on the secret list are the ships of a British fleet, a fleet of warships and a convoy of transports detailed for offensive action. Its destination, a closely guarded secret, only the Admiral and a few others knew the objective of this powerful assembly of ships, aircraft and troops. When you're in the Navy, you get used to taking a lot of things in your stride. The men looked as if they didn't care even when real fruit was sent aboard. Just in case you've forgotten, those are bananas, those were. Soon, the troop ships with their strong escort are underway. But even on occasions like this, traditional ceremonies aren't forgotten by the men of the Royal Navy. En route, the ships crossed the equator, and that meant the usual costumes and the usual fun, as those men who hadn't crossed the line before were initiated by Father Neptune. was the mascot forgotten. <laughs> Rear Admiral Seifert, commanding the naval forces, took part, and he too was made a member of the Brotherhood of Old Sea Dot. Mr. Churchill said recently that while the expedition was on its way, he had viewed anxiously the advice of many critics to occupy Madagascar. Well, that happened to be the very spot for which this concentration was bound. There was also anxiety as to whether the Japs would get there first, for from Madagascar's naval base and aerodromes, they could dominate our supply routes to India and seriously prejudice the naval situation in Far Eastern waters. Night fell, and final instructions from the rear admiral were passed aboard from another destroyer. Under cover of darkness, the destroyers entered Courier Bay and commandos were put ashore. Orders had been given not to open fire unless the defenders did so first. There was an uncanny silence while the men in the ships waited for news. Suddenly, a signal. That meant the commandos had successfully taken the coastal gun. As dawn broke, the main landing parties were revealed going ashore in assault barges. These landings too were carried out at Korea Bay on the western side of the isthmus. As the morning wore on, it was possible to watch our troops and tanks moving up the steep hills. The main objective was the great naval base of Diego Suarez on the eastern side. The French were now putting up a stout resistance and aircraft took off from the carrier. No reply having been received to our ultimatum, destroyers bombarded the mainland. Their target here being an artillery observation post known as Windsor Castle. Then marines were transferred from the flagship to a destroyer. They were to be landed in order to penetrate and capture the naval base from the opposite side. By night, the shelling of Windsor Castle again. Next day, the naval base itself was bombarded. Finally, the capitulation signal having been received from the island, the British fleet steamed majestically into Diego Suarez Bay. Our objective had been gained. In Rear Admiral Seifert's quarters aboard the flagship, Major General Sturges, Royal Marines, discussed with Brigadier Festing, the Admiral and others, the terms to be accorded to the French.
There were reunions aboard the flagship. The Marines who captured the base had returned, having suffered only one slight casualty. Surrender. The commander of the French forces, Colonel Clairbou, comes aboard the flagship. Later, outside French headquarters in Ancirana, Admiral Seifert inspected the Guard of Honor before going inside to attend the treaty conference. There, final arrangements were discussed for the taking over of the northern part of the island by British forces. While the talks were going on, our cameraman flew over Diego Suarez, looking down on a German merchant ship which had been hastily scuttled in the dry dock. Meanwhile, things were rapidly getting back to normal. The native population, terrified by the events of the past few days, returned, confidence restored by the appearance of the band of the Royal Marines, and the troops were soon making friends with local inhabitants. French guns were silent in the blockhouses, and the native population were determined to leave no doubt as to their peaceful intention. Admiral Seifert made a thorough tour of inspection, paying special attention to the work of the fleet air arm in destroying a French aerodrome. So accurate was their bombing that they managed to destroy the hangars and aircraft without damaging the runway. Hudson's of the South African Air Force had already arrived on the aerodrome, and within half an hour they were off again on reconnaissance. In the harbour, the fleet was peacefully at anchor, another job successfully accomplished. Necessity having demanded that the United Nations should establish themselves in Madagascar, the island has passed to Allied keeping, so forestalling the anticipated move by Japan. The efficiency of the British forces which captured Diego Suarez within three days was beyond praise. While we sincerely regret every shot we had to fire against Frenchmen forced to follow the lead of Vichy,